Ramble. Hey everybody, welcome to the Tripod. We are the Try Guys. This is the official podcast of the Try Guys. You got your four lovable triers on the internet. Maybe you know us on the internet with our YouTube channel, the Try Guys. Maybe you don't, and you just found us on your favorite podcast listening app. Well, either way, we're here to delight you, excite you, and invite you into our minds, souls, and hearts today because we're answering a bunch of questions submitted by you, the listeners. It's oh, a very that. special day. I mean, it's, it's, a, a, it's a special podcast. It's a huge yeah. special podcast. But before we get to those questions, I got beef. You what? got beef? I got Ooh. beef. I Where? Got Where do you have it? Well, I got it in my mind. <laughs> is, I, is it beef against one of us? No. It is, is it beef? It's what's for dinner? It's external beef. Oh, Ooh, is man. it a, a person? Ooh, let's guess your beef. It's uh, not is a it a company? Yes. Oh. 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 Are you going to well, say yeah. the company? Are you going to sue? I'm not going to sue. I'm Are they a potential sponsor? Yes. Oh, really? Yeah. They, I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, they could no. be. Oh, uh, no. We got to call out The Bachelor. Oh. oh. Bachelor. Season this one, episode three, which was last mm. night's episode. Season this so one, got, episode last night. Episode the last night. Beef with The Bachelor. The Bachelorette, actually, yeah. specifically. It's a Bachelor franchise. It's the Bachelorette but expression. But Keith, you love The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. I do enjoy the antics that all of those boys and girls get into with all of that champagne. Does mm. anyone like purely love The Bachelor? Or I feel like doesn't everyone kind of ironically like The Bachelor? No, there are some people who secretly, purely love it. It's kind uh-huh. of both. Huh. It's kind of both. It's like me, you it's genuinely the like it, but also realize... I think that, that the editing is fantastic. I think they're producing quite an amazing show. I think there's amazing villains, they're, heroes. The next time on The Bachelor and the next time like that that package that they edit so is deceptive. the most finely edited wow. media on all of television. And it's all a lie. You're it's always amazing. like, wow, next this episode was like kind of trash, but next week though, next week though, shit's going down. And then you get there and you're like, yeah, but next week though. I would love for someone to say that about our videos. Like, does anyone genuinely like the try guys <laughs> or just like ironically well, like you know the who guys. likes the try guys the bachelor okay because they always have this stupid uh all the men have like a race where they do like parenty things but this time they did it different they did it step by step it wasn't a race and they had the men try on pregnancy bellies <gasps> we've they done had, that they had the men change diapers we've on done that fake babies no. they had them tend to robot babies okay well, no. they had them have dr trumpy give them what labor pain what? simulation and then to cap it all off whoa whoa, whoa. okay the cap it all off no they Don't went back after the date to the cocktail hour, and what food was served? McNuggets. Shut. Fucking up. chicken McNuggets, which means they know and they wanted us to know that they stole our their creative from our motherhood series Wait, from so four or five years ago. I have a lot of questions, and we also need to give some context. So <sighs> was, was it in that order? In that order. Oh, my God. So uh, a couple- They stole our ideas so a couple years ago we made a motherhood series because a lot of those things are not wholly unique to us right but we made a five-part series with those episodes in that order uh and we did it very popularly so in fact the we did a video where we had labor pain simulation on us and that has been viewed over 100 million, million times. times. They did it that in the exact same order. In in this, order. With, with the and same person. With our expert. That's the, good. The, now, that's the a, same doctor that we used. Yes. Now, all these that's things. That's crazy. If they did that, it would be like, well, the Kardashians have done the labor pain simulation. Uh-huh. They've done pregnancy right. bellies. They've done robot babies before. So it's like not that obvious that it's ours. Yeah. But the fact the that fucking they McNuggets. chose to serve McNuggets. Which was one of the most viral the viral breakout from the moment. entire series that got millions of views on its own they're actually eating chicken mcnuggets which means they wanted to wink at us and say hey thanks for the pre-pro boys because they use the exact models of if they use oh, our bellies up. they use our robot babies they don't using some other company it's clear that they're using the exact ones wow. that we used so they have katie leblanc to thank yeah for that pre-pro because in that video you were so pissed 
that you couldn't do anything. You just were like, fuck this. I need to go get chicken McNuggets. Mm-hmm. And then you ordered more nuggets <sighs> because you were just I'm, furious. Well, it was cheaper to buy to be... 20 than five. Right. Uh, that, which is crazy. Yeah. No, if you buy, what is it? If you buy five nuggets for 350 or 20 nuggets for five bucks. Yeah. Can't that, afford well, not duh. to buy it. Fucking duh. <laughs> I don't know whether to be honored, dismayed, it's upset. I long. guess you can't really copyright doing any of those things no we can't sue them we can just be like hey guys but i i'm honored i'm honored i just wish i were invited yeah that's sort of it like they didn't yeah, tweet a little us shout out like, like hey the try guys did this so today you're gonna try right you know just a shout out it was quite it was it was cool you know the producers definitely did i think with the hmm. nuggets it was a wink like hey guys we like it we, we know like this is show. try guys we love the try guys wow so you're going through a moment right now so we <sighs> The four of us have made such amazing, amazing videos that they could all lead up to one episode of television. What, one segment. On <laughs> one the segment of one episode yeah. of a 20 season franchise. Can someone go to our Wikipedia wow. and add that as our legacy? Is that we inspired, yeah. uh, what is it, season 52, episode three? <laughs> I don't know which season it is. I just assume that they've been doing this forever. I haven't been watching the last few, but I'm back in on this season. I'm back in. You're back in? What got you? Um, I, you know, there's a lot to know from the very first episode. And if you feel like you see the guy that you want to win in that first episode, you're like, I'll watch. And then it's clear to me that that guy might win. And I'm very excited Mm. for his journey. You know, you know how I know he's he's got, he's in it for the right reasons. You know how I know the bachelor bachelorette is back on how the trending tab on the side has boring white white people's names. (laughs) Is there someone named Colton? Always. There's always Always. a Colton. Mm. What is with the name Colton and being a bachelorette? Contestant? I don't watch the show and even I know about Colton. Like Colton is <laughs> just bred to become someone who goes on The Bachelor. Coltons. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I've never met a Colton. I only think that they're associated with The Bachelorette. Maybe there's like a lab somewhere where they create Coltons. Mm. Wait, is there actually a Colton on this Bachelorette? He was the previous Bachelor, bachelor was named Oh, that Colton. his name was Colton. So, no, I don't Colton. think there's a Colton this season. The Virgin. But there is a uh, John... Paul James or something like that. Oh, he man. makes you say his full three-part name when you address him. Wait, like one Ugh. of the founding fathers? Yeah, John and he Paul looks James. kind of like a founding father. Like his John whole look Jacob is, Jingleheimer Smith? It's almost that. Oh, so, I don't think that beef is too bad. It's more of a... Oh, I forgot about you're that. More, it's more of a, how dare you, sir? It's not like... It's, oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's less of a beast and more of a, a guest. It's more yeah. like, I've caught you with your pants down and you're acting like your pants aren't down. Yeah, Anyone you, else got any hot beef from this weekend? Uh... No, nothing that compares to Keith's beef. Keith, that was some spicy beef. That was that was some chicken. Also, yeah. very like try guys grade beef because I don't think any of the four of us could have real beef with someone unless they were truly awful people. We're not very, we're not into that YouTuber we're drama. Not beefy. We're not into that. We're not beefy boys. <laughs> I really think <laughs> that we should that. like create a, a parody series where we just create beef with each other. Who would have the best fake beef? Because YouTuber drama, it's big. It's and it big. gets you the views. So I'm not saying that like they're doing it for the views, but I'm saying the result is the views. We could do views. it for the views. And we're, yeah, absolutely. And we're four of right? us. Right? I've always yeah. had this dream that I would have beef with you guys, but I would release the beef on our channel. And then you <laughs> would release the response to the beef also on our channel. That's pretty because smart. Because normally the beef makes people unsubscribe and then they go, it's like cross-channel pop, pop, pollination. I want to keep it all in our I want home. our numbers to go up and down yes. like crazy. Right. It's just like <laughs> just fluctuates. It's a joke how crazy our numbers are. <laughs> and each video is... Ned cancels the Try Guys. Zach cancels the Try Guys. Yeah, yeah that's Team, our new series. That's Eugene the cancel series. Cancel. I'm yeah, going to bye guys. My, oh, uh, bye guys. guys. Bye guys. Bye guys. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> that's a fun uh, exercise to think of your really close group of friends and then imagine a world where you hate them. Well, but then we could come back together <laughs> again. It fun would be so exercise. magical. No, it's fun. I actually feel like the people in this room who would hate each other the most if we did hate each other would be Ned and Zach. I don't know Ooh. why. It's just why I think you guys would have practice. the most intense practice. beef. <clears throat> would Ned and I have the beef against each other, or we yeah, both against, have beef against, against each other? You? I just think we, if we all had like actual animosity towards each other, I just feel like yours would be the most intense, and I don't know why. Okay, mm. well, I have my beef against Ned. I'm ready. <clears throat> oh, I'm not going to get specific. <laughs> set it up. Tee it up, bro. You want me to go first? I'll, I'll, set, I'll set the pace in an innocent way. This. Yeah, you, you, I'm not going to say any. I don't have any specific beef. Yeah, the YouTube title I is just called. Have a style. <sighs> 
Bye hey guys. Guy. Bye guy. This is a really hard video for me to make, but I want I want you to know that once upon a time, I was the baby. I was the cute one. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, Ned goes, my brand's not strong enough. I need to make a thing that's cuter than you. And how do you think that made me feel? Mm. That would be my beef. That's Ooh. good. That's good. Good beef. Top what do you got to say to that? <sighs> my, and this is hey titled, guys. <laughs> my response to the corn hater. My response to the <laughs> corn hater. <laughs> uh, so... You guys may have already seen my apology uh, that I released and then later deleted, but I just <laughs> wanted, and I'm not going to apologize for that, but I just want to tell everyone out there about what's going on, because there's a lot of rumors about between me and Zach and Corn Babies and Corn Buddies and Wesley, um, but I've got the receipts, and I'm going to back it up, because for nine months... Before my baby was born, Zach was supporting you. We knew Zach was supporting me. Zach was me. talking to you. Zach was talking to me. Zach bought a gift. Keith and I have unfollowed both of you yeah. on social media. <laughs> hey guys, um, so I want to go ahead and, and apologize for my previous video in which I said that Wes probably stabbed and killed a prostitute. I, 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 yes, maybe I have receipts. But I'm not going to show them because I'm... You know, I'm uh, on second thought, this is pretty bad. We should just start beef with The Bachelor. Yeah. Hey, what? guys. <laughs> this is the hardest video I've ever had to make. I actually started filming this video yesterday, and <laughs> I, I deleted all the footage. I hated it. <laughs> and then this morning, I tried again, and I, I didn't like it. So I actually threw out that camera. I bought a new <laughs> camera. I bought new SD cards, and I'm ready to expose the truth. And that is that I think The Bachelor... Um, is in its last season. I think it's about to get canceled. Wow. If I left the Try Guys and made a Why I Left Try Guys video, would, would you guys be mad? Yeah, no, that would be hilarious. Well, what do you, what do you got, Miles? Miles? You Certainly, you I would wouldn't. Be the proudest. I'd it wouldn't be. Re, it would be like a bit, probably. Unless you guys fuck, fuck me up. I don't know. <laughs> we're, 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 we're planning to fuck you up. Yeah, no. I, I, we're going to fuck you up. Miles, I feel like you have enough ammunition that if you twisted it yeah. and and took yourself out as a willing participant over the last few months yeah. you could you could frame some stuff pretty weird well that's why i joined <laughs> was just to get the beef video i get that they yeah. forced me to shoot their videos and i'm like i okay sure i got like a paycheck or whatever but yeah. i i'm an artist i need to create yeah well, enough about our secrets. Let's hear <laughs> fan secrets, Miles. That's a good point, Eugene. Last week, uh, you know, I've been doing a, a segment called Advice That'll Go For Miles, where I give advice to the audience. Everybody knows this. Who watches Everyone the show. loves it. Everyone loves it's it. Everyone's They've favorite been, segment. Yeah. Demanding, they have to listen to the end. They demanding demanding t-shirts. All the people want. who listen to the last five minutes Miles, really you know, love it. it started out as my least favorite segment, oh. and now it's my most favorite segment. Hey, thanks, Ned. That's very nice. Does that uh, mean we've gotten worse, Ned? Or? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's gotten better. <laughs> So uh, we put an email address for people to contact me with advice. Unfortunately, we got so, and fortunately, we got so many requests for advice that we're going to have to do the rest of the episode. And I'm going to need you guys' help answering people's questions. Wow. Ooh, wait, Miles, this. how many? So wait, you put your email address out there. Yes. How many emails did we get? Okay, so it's advice that'll go for miles at gmail.com. Of course, everyone knows. Everyone it's knows. favorite email address. We got 86 emails. Emails. Wow. You wow. said we got over a hundred before I, yeah. we started well, recording. Yeah, yeah, you kind of kind of hang on, let me just take that again. I'll just edit <laughs> it back in. We got a thousand okay. no, that's too many. Wow. Yeah, that's too emails. Many. Yeah, you'll never be able to answer like all that. That's too many emails. But I combed through mm -hmm. and I found so many juicy tidbits and so many people who love the show and people are being very supportive and that's kind. Oh, that's so I'd like great. to make this clear. Um, during work hours, mm -hmm. you spent how long going through emails that's on right. an email address that yep. we did not give you permission to an make. An unsanctioned. For, yeah. Uh, yeah, for a segment on the podcast that we did not say that yep. you could expand. That's my uh, own. Zach, yeah. Zach, you're just giving him fuel for his work. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, and I appreciate your positive reinforcement. <laughs> uh, no. Well, yeah, no, I'm all behind it. I yep. just wanted to make sure that... And so now right. the entire podcast... Mm -hmm. is the segment yep i like this i support you miles thank you so much yeah <laughs> i can't wait to see your why i love try guys video and how you i appreciate how you that. say how much you like me yeah i love of course eugene's always been good to me 
All and, right. <laughs> and, All right. And, uh, and I'm going to need <laughs> I'm going to need a fake name. <clears throat> a lo- uh, Colton. Aladdin? Aladdin. <laughs> Colton. Aladdin. 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 He's Aladdin's brother. Yeah, Aladdin. No, 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 no relation. No, no, okay. just, just <laughs> a similar name. Okay. What okay. Aladdin. By the way, Keith, did you like that movie? I liked it. You did? I so invited- we don't have beef with Aladdin? No, I, it, it wasn't as good as the cartoon, but it was still fun. How many uh-huh was there? I would say it got like three uh-s. Yeah, nice. Yeah. What was that you just did, Zach? I was trying to do the Will Smith, but I forgot what noise he made, so I just made the first. No, his is uh. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Aladdin time. Aladdin time. All right. I got invited to see it in 4D, and I wasn't sure if I should go, but maybe I will. I don't know. That may be too many Ds. That's too many Ds. Well, it's the the one where the shake shakes. He shakes you? Will Smith stands behind your row, and he just shakes your seat. He says, oh, no, this next part's great. No, way. be quiet. Watch this next part. Aladdin writes, Whoa, this is that? called Best Friend's Brother. Oh, that's already juicy. Hey, Miles. Last summer at camp, I realized I had a crush on my best friend's brother. Oh, I love this. Oh. I didn't tell anyone for 10 months, and I finally told my best friend a week ago. In response, she said that it made her uncomfortable, and since she's very protective of her brother, she spoke for him by saying that he wasn't ready for anything. Huh. But he flirts with me often, so I know that this is false. Should I date him even though my best friend doesn't want me to? Or should I respect her decision and give up? My dream guy. Thanks. Love the podcast. Okay. How old do we think I, they that's, are? They're definitely Teens. camp high school. It has to be like high school. Oh, camp? Yeah, high school. I was camp could be younger. Camp or mi- middle school or high school. Maybe yeah. it's middle school. But you don't go to camp when you're in college. High school. No. Yeah. You don't go to camp when you're in high school. Well, let's say this this person is probably yeah. around maybe 12, 12 to 18. Yeah. 12 to 18. That's a huge range. Well, middle Giant school, high school. Range. And the brother must be younger. You sure. Oh, think so? what? No, yeah, because be she's brother. protective of her brother, and he's no. not ready for a relationship. Younger yeah. sisters can be protective of their. But older he's brothers. not ready for a relationship if they're like a year apart. What? Okay, let's just maybe think about this. If if a girl is twelve to eighteen, like twelve, no twelve year old girl is, has a crush on a younger guy because girls mature faster than boys, so they always have crushes on the older guys. That's true. Sometimes girls like younger guys. Typically, you have the crush on the older. The brother. older guy. I agree that that's typical. Mm-hmm. But, but we this don't person's know. Seeking advice. Mm-hmm. We're gonna have to make assumptions here yeah. about. A lot in okay. his life. Okay. Well, we can choose that he's older. I just don't think a younger sister would have. I don't think. I don't think. I don't think. I don't think so. Just for her. Just what, what just, are you trying to say? <laughs> yeah. oh, I don't think that. I don't think a younger sister would be like old oh, older brother. Keith, you're getting bigger. I don't think I understand. I this sounds. Uh, this also sounds like <laughs> the way the way that the way that she's saying best friend makes me feel like this is her best friend yeah as in the one she's always had Mm -hmm. because gives me a sense of someone who's maybe around 14 ish to 15 Mm -hmm. potentially with an older brother situation before Mm -hmm. your first big fallout can i give you my my just my gut reaction yeah response yeah yeah Yeah, let's hear it yeah (laughs) no d's worth that drama okay oh i love that i'm only gonna respond with hell yeah yeah that's uh, <laughs> I don't think it's worth it because if this is your best friend, this relationship, you guys are in middle school, it's not going to last unless like this fucking sweetheart forever, in which case you guys are meant to be and you'll get together in the long run. So, like, I'll give a more nuanced response. So there's other D in the C, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. But continuing, uh, I think that this is an opportunity for the person writing to deepen their relationship with their best friend to have a more open and honest conversation or she could deepen that d with her brother oh right i forgot their middle school if she can talk about why this is important to her and then the other friend can explain how they're ready or not ready they'll either come to the conclusion that it shouldn't happen or it should happen but maybe if that is something that they do together and do honestly (laughs) it'll work out that their friendship is stronger and maybe she gets that D too. You were never a teenage girl. That conversation like, would never happen. She, she That's why it's an friend. advice podcast. <laughs> she, she we go. gotta be realistic about the people. Have uh, you ever? I, I, what, what? What? Have you ever what? dated a friend's sibling, like a friend's little oh, sister or a friend's? Uh, I have. Sister? How'd it go? I forgot. <laughs> I have real life ed- practical experience here. I, I Are don't. you still friends with this person? Yeah. Well, huh? I guess I don't want to. S- People might know. Uh, <laughs> I my my only other girlfriend in life was my girlfriend in high school, and before I dated her, I was like 
I dare it. I actually fuck. I was best friends with her brother. So you stopped. <gasps> Wait, I did this. Wait, you so you stopped being friends with him. You said before no, I dated her. Uh, no, I just mean prior to dating her, he and I were really good friends. But I, the way I'm saying that makes it seem like something happened. <laughs> I was friends with him first. Yes, right, right. Before the relationship, you continued existed. friendship, and then the relationship, the friendship continued after. Did it deepen? But I don't know. I can't remember. I don't think I asked his permission. I must have just told him and been like, hey, man, are you cool with this? And he was like, yeah, man. But he was like, he was that way. <laughs> he yeah, sounds man. awesome. He was, I, <laughs> I just, he kind of was like that. <laughs> They're a very, very close wow. family. Wow, gross. Uh, <laughs> uh, my, but my, it went well. And we got like, then when I hung out with her, I hung out with him and it was great. But then I also, I, sometimes I would look at him and I'd be like, hmm, I can kind of see her face in your face. Oh. Mm. So okay. I, I would warn you to, to think about that. My advice, <laughs> my advice is that this is a, there's a lot of variables. It depends on people sometimes and age, I think also comes into, into play. I feel like if this was, if you're in your thirties, then there's a little more room to be like, yeah, I'm just going to still fuck your brother. Mm. But um, <laughs> I think because the friend who is established as best friend explicitly said it makes her uncomfortable. That is kind of the first point of respect. And if you don't respect that admission, you're kind of going to be the one everyone says is the shit ball. Yeah. And what I think is that besides personal emotions, which is if you're young, you'll learn a lot more in the future, though I can't judge you now. What is most important in high school, middle school is how people perceive you because people are awful. And if you become the friend who gets with the brother after explicitly being told not to, you will be ridiculed and ostracized mm -hmm. as a girl. And, and that is not worth your emotional uh, time. That's true. Or, well, in addition, so respect her wishes, but mm -hmm. go to your friend and say, you know that thing you really like doing? You can't do that anymore. Oh, a tradesies. So oh, you yep. have to abstain yep. from something you like. <laughs> right. So that because I, it makes me uncomfortable. Because it makes me uncomfortable. I'm very protective of that chain of restaurant going that to you bowling. Like. <laughs> if yeah, you bowl, be, I'm going to fuck your brother. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm saying, you should say like, look, I'm going to not do right. something I really want to do, but that's not fair to me, so I want you to withdraw from the poker club. Well, <laughs> yep. But Keith, you know I love the poker club. You don't I, have to put your cards on the table. Thing. There's other clubs you could join. No, but, 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 but you just chose also, the one that I like. Yeah. Just general advice, like yeah. boys at that age are stupid oh, for and sure. shitty, yeah. and in the end, they're not going to really remember any of that anyways, so yeah. just value your confidence first well mm. as we agree yeah. this is a mature older brother not a stupid younger well, brother we all 30. agree no, but yeah. like you already have a friendship uh -huh. it's described as a best friendship who knows what the relationship will be with the guy so True. you have to keep your friendship also might i point out we're not talking about the guy in this situation yet he has equal responsibility in this why is it on the girls to have to decide he has probably mm -hmm. been told by his sister she's not comfortable with him dating her best friend yeah. flirting so stop flirting with her stop flirting brian yeah believe, <laughs> yeah brian i can't believe i forgot that like i actually lived through this yeah. and that i had real it's crazy Miles, we have 86,000 emails to get through. We're I know, spending there's too a much lot. time we here. Move on. Move yeah. it on. Let's get another fake name. Bring Let Eugene specifics. read it. Absolutely. Uh, no, I like hearing Miles read it. Gloriel. Gloriel. Uh huh. All right. Gloriel. Gloriel. All right. Gloriel. I'll read this one and I'll have Eugene read the next one. Gloriel writes OMG, please help is the subject. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. I'm well, not. I hope that you gave her a prompt response because that tells me that she needed you, Miles, and you left her hanging. Yeah, I sent her a picture of me with a caption. I'll get to it. It's an auto fill. <laughs> um, <laughs> hi, Miles. That gift. I Wait, really? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I have to get an ultrasound next week. Oh. Not preggers, just checking stuff. Oh. And the guy I'm sort of seeing's ex-wife works at the hospital as an ultrasound tech. Whoa, 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 whoa. Mm -hmm. The guys I'm seeing ex-wife. We're gonna do okay, the ultrasound. Got it, got it, yeah, got it. there's a, a very high chance mm. she will be the one doing it. Mm. I might literally die by how much I don't want that to happen. And if it isn't her, it will be the guy she left him for, oh. who also works there. What do I do? Help. Well, wow. the fact that she is the one that initiated the leaving makes you free mm. of guilt and culpability. That being said, still going to be very uncomfortable. Mm. Yeah. Also, That's what she's asking. I mean, you could just like email the hospital and be <laughs> like, hey, I don't trust my personal information with these two technicians. That's a great point. Like, Can you if, do that? I, I think you should be able to because they, they literally 
uh, are, are able to access all of your information. They can't tell other people, but these yeah. people might have a reason to not like you. I, I yeah, might have a reason would, to tell other people and break the rules. I would request a specific technician that's not them and just say, I have uh, personal matters that mean I can't be with these people in this exposed position. Mm. Yeah, that's, have you that's ever nice. had to deal with uh, like one of your exes' new pe- persons being critically involved in your life? Or had to confront them in some way. Mm-hmm. Um, well, actually, here's a funny thing. Becky and I both dated people before one another. That then, when Becky, Becky your and, wife, yeah. So Becky and I, after we started dating, our exes dated each other too. Ha! Huh. So literally, amazing. my ex girlfriend dated her ex boyfriend. Weird. And they didn't make it, obviously. So when we made it, that was dope. That was <laughs> fucking dope. <laughs> both of them are another relationship that seems sound now. But are still not as good well, as the qu- ours. We want. I think the you core want. Qu- we want. Well, the core question and part of your answer, which jokingly you're saying, but I'm curious if it's there's truth in it. Do you wish ill upon your exes inherently because they're your ex? Mm. Oh, I don't. Uh, I, and and I think maybe it's just because all of my relationships have ended, and I feel a very amicable way. Mm. I haven't had somebody cheat on me and then run away. Yeah, you know, like. So I didn't have like, ah, my heart is ripped apart. I had my heart broken and that we don't didn't like each other as much or maybe one person wanted out earlier. But as far as I know, I was never, uh, you know, someone didn't do something that actively really hurt me. I mean, I was just going to say go to a different hospital. <laughs> That's a great. Maybe it's the only one that takes you can insurance. get your well. You can go anywhere and get tests transferred and printed out and shifted. It's a hassle, but mm. you can do it. I'd say, based on what she's shared, mm. the drama is inherently between her ex and her ex's wife, who left him for this other guy. This is a prime situation as an adult where you are ancillary to the core drama. Mm -hmm. And I think one part of growing up and actually feeling more comfortable in these situations is one, not feeding into it because then you get swept into it and you become part of it and Mm -hmm. then you're an active participant. So you have to find ways to be sidelined, but also not in the game. And I think that comes from just not even recognizing that the drama is a part of you. You have to kind of be above that. And I would hope that she could just become confident in that situation and go mm-hmm. and like not because they're the ones who are trembling in their pants yeah but she's gonna go in and like the person's gonna be like rubbing her belly and be like so how's brian it's gonna fucking <laughs> come up well if that woman asks that then she just gotta develop her uh, yeah, superior stank strong. face this is yeah. what i do all the time when i see people doing drama do it this it's is great, descri- great, great on a podcast. Yeah, yeah, describe that's Eugene's good. face. He's he's, he's not. Oh, he's, 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 he is. He looks, is yeah. disdainful. Yeah. He's got like this sort of purse, purse lips, and his eyes are a little bit condescending. I don't know what it his hurts face when is he looks. Yeah, he looked yeah. at me and it hurt he my feelings. Like, hurt. Yeah. yeah, I don't like this one bit. I would like to change the bit. I I feel very. <laughs> oh, there's a smile. Thank God. That's that's the face everyone should adopt when they're they know about the drama, but then they're letting you know they're not going to be part of the drama, but they know about the drama. That was both terrible for a podcast and for my self esteem. I just imagine that face keeps going when she says, you have a horrible disease. <laughs> yeah, oh, geez. man. You Oof. can find that in an ultrasound? <laughs> well, yeah, if it's maybe, not yeah. a pregnancy, it's I probably think like about a cyst or something, yeah. which isn't horrible, but, but not could fun. be bad. I, I had think an I, ultrasound. Could be about cancer. I, the one, the first ultrasound I ever had was um, a bunch of doctors projecting my guts in front of a bunch of other doctors That's because cool. I needed money. You can listen to more about it on Kelsey Dara's podcast that I'm on. <laughs> I didn't get an ultrasound, but I did get a sonogram on my testicles. Ooh. And the person who did that was my little sister's best friend's mother. And <laughs> I was in middle school and Rough. it was awful. Rough. It was a, she was like, Squirting blue gel, very cold gel on my nutsack and r- slowly rubbing it uh, <laughs> in, in little circles. And she was like, so how's Stephanie? Oh, how's the mom? Oh, how everything at the house? And how's your cat? And, and, and my, my genitalia was in her hand. Is that yeah. better than just total silence with Eugene's stare? <laughs> I, yeah. If what I, was uh, your expression? If, if I tried to just, just stare her down <laughs> and just make her feel horrible about herself. I can't do it. I'm trying to. I mean, be- she's someone that I had known for uh, since I was since before my genitalia had had the stuff that I wanted to hide. Right. I had. I grew a second penis. Yeah. It yeah. sounds like the ultrasound is what is the most compromising about the situation. But right. hopefully, she can grow to feel comfortable that she's not part of that drama. 
Next question. All right, we need a fake name. Oh, give me, guys, give me a fake name. Bonjour. All right, this is Math Bonjour. <laughs> Dear Mr. Miles. Oh, actually, this is Mrs. Math Bonjour. Don't read it, Ned. You're going to know the real name. Only I can know. The subject is Foot Locker with three question marks. Dear Mr. Miles, what is one thing that I absolutely have to have in my dorm room? I'm starting my freshman year of college in the fall, and my question. family is in shambles about what I should buy. Falling <laughs> <laughs> apart. Oh, I just imagine the family hating that. Also, my grandfather is adamant about getting me f- a foot locker for some reason. Have and- you got a shower, Gaddy? You need a shower, Gaddy. Where are you going to put your shampoo? Oh, God, we're falling apart. <laughs> Brian! I imagine the father's name is Brian. He's addressing. So his, she's asking. Oh, mother, I was like, he's okay, but wait. There's more to this, and I'm confused. Also, my grandfather is adamant about getting me a Foot Locker for some reason, and we're unable to convince him otherwise. What sorts of fun things can I keep in there? Thanks for your time. With love, Math Bonjour. Is a Foot Locker just a small locker? I have no, chest. You need yeah, a thing, yeah. Foot I thought Locker because <clears throat> you need to put your shoes in there. I thought a Foot Locker was just a store. Feeling your shoes. It's like a large. cubby. Like a like shoe cubby. cubby. Um, what is the most valuable thing you had in your dorm? Oh, college? valuable. Uh, no, the Just most valuable that you, thing that you need to have. Mm, mm, mm-hmm. uh, what, what actually changes your experience? A, Probably your student ID. A mini fridge yeah. with a microwave on top of it. Hell yeah. Wait, is that's that a two in one that they sell? Good. No. No, you just need both. You just got it. That, I, I consider it mm-hmm. your kitchen. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was essential. Did you guys, uh, did your dorms come with mini fridges? to bring my own it was nice. yours yeah. came with a mini fridge i had like not. like it was like the brand new dorms that they had just uh-huh. built at my college and it was i mean we had so it was like three bedrooms and then we connected and had a, a shared fridge oh we called those super suites yeah we had from. a dope super suite yeah that's awesome it was awesome probably the most valuable thing in my dorm room was a 720p projector Ooh, that that's big. made a movie on the entire wall. That's a great plan. My roommate, who owned it and <laughs> was kind of a gross dude at the time, he called it the panty dropper. Wow. Wow. Whoa. Nice. Awful. That must have been a hit. I, Unfortunate. When I told my wife Ariel about this, she said, so, so did he think that that... Someone would be so impressed at the size of the screen projecting on the wall. I thought it was that a they cr- would what drop drop their, drop their pant- panties. Drop that, panties. That's what he thought would happen. Yeah. Was a- and I was like, Ariel, when you say it out loud, it's really quite foul and disgusting. <laughs> but yeah, it was pretty big screen. Pretty well, this big is screen. reminder. This is Miss Math Bonjour. Mm-hmm. Can I say something abstract? Absolutely. I think, inspired by Ned's story, one very valuable thing you need to do is establish an immediate relationship and understanding with your roommate. Yeah. (laughs) Because every Mm -hmm. terrible college experience I had was with some bullshit Mm -hmm. with my roommate because we either assumed we were best friends up top or never talked to each other to begin with. You just have to map that out Mm -hmm. immediately, especially, especially for girls. Yeah. Yeah. You need a contract. That's the most important thing. All there right, has to be question. some sort of <laughs> understanding. No, but there has to be some sort of understanding. And I feel yeah. like... So, what are you so saying? See if you have a lawyer in your family yeah. and just say <laughs> you need up. a freshman... Now, this is important. A freshman roommate contract. He'll know exactly what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, you're going to want to get that drafted. And then you're going to have to go down to... I'm sorry. What is the name of the people that stamp the stuff? Notary. No, a notary. notary. You're going to have to find a notary, but not just any notary. This mm-hmm. one has to be open on a Tuesday, which right. is very hard to find. It has to be a state notary, not a federal notary, because these Different contracts thing. are... No, I just think you have to have a state. realistic mm. view, adult view of how most relationships are which you will read about in clause idea. five no no it's the real, this is like real and of course you can keep that contract in your foot locker eugene shaking his head as if he's had, never, tell, tell me more about what sort of things you want to discuss well, so i lived with all guys had really weird relationships with most every roommate i had all the girlfriends i had because i had a lot of female friends in college they all either became best friends with each other and then hated each other by the end of college uh-huh. and it's because they all got together and said we're automatically best friends without even really knowing each other. And then by the midpoint of college, I don't know if you hung out with lots of groups of girls in college, they started warring with each other, they had warring factions, mm. they split up, then I had to choose which fr- side 
group I was with. This also happened in high school. There's a lot of drama there. Girls and friendships. It's tough. Complicated. Yeah. Boys and friendships. Fairly simple. Otherwise, I say get a mini fridge with a microwave on top. Yeah, it's important. I would say <laughs> if you have an armchair or something social, people hang out in your room and that's oh, you. I was going to say, smart. for a lady, you yeah. should get one of those big fuzzy bean bags. Heck yes. Yeah. Big yeah. fuzzy bean, bean bag. bag. Get a bean bag. Also, be sure that you get there first so you can choose what bed you want. Yeah, that's critical. And loft that motherfucking bed loft so you can build a little life under it. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I did not do that and I always regretted it. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. I, it does suck to climb up and down every night, but to have a hangout spot that's not your bed is awesome. You can put your TV under there. Mm -hmm. You can put a couple chairs under there. You can, you can put a yoga mat under there. I think it's a really good investment. I did the half loft. Where half you get loft the dresser is great. Underneath. Half loft oh, half great. loft's great, Half loft's great. <laughs> What posters did you guys have on your wall in freshman year? None. Really? Yeah. What? I, That's like the whole thing. You know me. I don't decorate. That's true. You don't decorate. I had really... I had... Okay. Three posters. Yeah. Entourage. Here. Oh, no, oh, Miles. Oh, no, Miles. 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 No. 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 Get ready no, for it. No. You can't... Get, no, Miles. Fight Club. <laughs> oh. And <yes>. Ocean <laughs> 13. <Ooh>. 13? <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Because the poster sale, that was where... Like, that yeah. was the only thing to do as 13? a freshman. In the first week? Yeah. The first week, you're like, hey, what's up? Uh, I met you at orientation. You want to go to the poster sale? I went to the poster sale like six times. Because wow. that's where everyone's congregating. Uh -huh. you, you either... You go to the dining hall or you go to the poster sale. Because it's like, oh, you hear there's this cool poster sale and everyone's gone. No Everyone goes time. to those college poster sales. Yeah, you know, I would advise not to hang up those general posters. Don't. Don't do it. It's more the interesting items or knickknacks people put up that I start conversations from. Yeah. Guys, one, our podcast is produced by an Entourage fan. I am not, not anymore. That's okay. Not anymore. He was like early season. I was fan. 17. He was, yeah, a he was a child. Also, times have done changed since when. Well, you didn't let me on. finish. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. All right. All Hope that right. Helped you out there, Math. Absolutely. Keep. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a juicy one. Give me that juice. Let me Ooh. find a super. Put it on the juice. Super, super juicy. That's a, one. quite a big water bottle you're drinking now. Is Thank it you. new? It looks new. Uh, you know, I never got to tell you guys the story of this thing, but I bought. <laughs> it has a story. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. I'm, well, 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 easily so i i'm doing a bunch of stuff in my life to make my insides nice and healthy and in that i bought what's like basically a i don't it's either like four or six hundred dollar water filter i wrote down the price because i thought you guys would be shocked and you're not no one's paying attention to me that's and big I, Zach, <laughs> i'm paying attention <laughs> to you there's a lot of this email's long and every line is funny right, keith asked the question and then both he and eugene were just staring at well, the floor well miles handed me a computer and then my i obviously got distracted <sighs> anyway that's this is the free water I bottle have. that came it's with beautiful. the preposterously expensive water filter that i bought so you think and i'm trying like to drink 50 dollar water bottle I'm trying to drink two to three of these a Wait, day. Wait, you're talking about a water bottle right now? Well, I'm talking about the... the That's what I was ignoring? <laughs> I'm talking about the filter from which the water bottle was a free add-on. Don't I have the same water filter as you? Can I no, taste it? No, you have... One. Can I taste it? Wait, are you sick, though? No, yeah, don't taste my but water. He, he, That's the whole suppressed. thing, is I don't want your mouth on my thing. That's the thing. Oh. Like, 50% of the emails were like, what water filter does Zach have? Really? No, yeah. you're kidding. Yeah, Shut you're, like, you're fucking with me. I thought you were serious, and I got really excited, and now I realize you're fucking with me, and I feel stupid. <laughs> All right, let's hop to a question. Ooh, can I name this person? You sure can. Quacky McFlufferson. Quacky McFlufferson. Ooh. Need advice on confidence. Oh, <laughs> quacky. This is a uh, long, so strap yourself in. I'm going to try yeah. not to laugh. Can I do it as the character? As it sounds hey, like. Miles! <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, why are you, I don't know why are you doing an impression of me? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Uh, well, the, the, the icon they sent of themselves is a cat. There's also a that dog attached to to the email just a photo of a dog that is um, very zach mm -hmm. it, yeah. i don't know this is one of those names that could could be a guy or a girl okay. uh, i don't know mm -hmm. i do know they're 13 hey miles uh i don't know if this will be read on the podcast or not but if so hello to keith ned zach and eugene as well basically <laughs> i need advice on how to be more confident when performing on june 18th which i know is keith's birthday they didn't write that i inserted that i'm saying <laughs> on june 18th I'm singing New York, New York by Frank Sinatra okay. all by myself in the middle school talent show. I'm yeah, 13. love it. Love it. I'm 13. That is obviously such a powerful song that requires <laughs> a lot of confidence. However, 
I just don't know how to act powerful and sure of myself without seeming awkward and nervous. For a few years now, I've dealt with a lot of anxiety. Not clinically diagnosed, but you know what I'm saying. And I'm trying to tackle my fears head on, so I figured it's a perfect opportunity. I can always picture myself on stage in front of people performing, doing really well. <laughs> but let's face it, I can barely perform in front of my dog without breaking a nervous sweat. <laughs> I, I, I would greatly appreciate any tips you or the guys the got. The character is changing. <laughs> <as you know. laughs> hey, once he heard Sinatra, he went yeah. full Sinatra. New York, New York. New York, New York. I would graciously I would greatly appreciate any tips you or the guys have on power, <laughs> stage presence, and most of all, confidence. Hey, thanks, <laughs> thanks, and stay talented and amazing. That's from who was it? Quacky McFlufferson. Quacky McFlufferson from New Jersey, P.S. Oh, you got the Jersey dead on. Yeah. Your new you, your YouTube channel and the podcast have truly got me through the roughest of times. I remember oh. when you guys weren't on BuzzFeed anymore. My dad, I introduced my dad to you. Now he's obsessed, lol. Uh, but we were terrified. The guy, that guys were gone. Over. <laughs> you, saw, you guys and your tight team make so many people happier than you'll ever know. Keep up the incredible work. BPS. Here's my dog. Hopefully wow. his smushy little face can brighten up your day. Aww. Thank you, Quacky. There's the Aww. dog. Beautiful dog. Aww. Beautiful Aww. dog. Quacky. Smushy little Labrador, face. I think. Quacky's yeah. a real star. I, I like Quacky. I like your, Quacky. Your re- I want you to do that character always. This is a uh, question that I think we could give a lot of advice on, actually. Yeah, I mean, my first thought is, wow, this water tastes amazing and it's oh worth every single penny. You gotta go get yourself a good water filter. Yeah. So what I think is interesting about this is he's a performer. He or she. Like, he know. or she. He or she. If this were just confidence in everyday life, I would say, just be yourself. But when you're on stage, you get to be somebody else. So my advice is... Buy a fedora. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Anything that'll make you more insecure is, is Please, your choice to wear I don't a fedora. Know. If you do own not it. buy a fedora. No, 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 no. All right, you don't have to get a fedora, but have a costume. Be somebody else. Is it just the voice Be... that Keith did that made you think fedora? No, it's, it's Frank Sinatra's iconic song, New York, New York. That's a very fedora song. That's a fedora song. forward you song. Get a, you get a three piece suit and a fedora. And you're suddenly not yourself. You're Frank Sinatra. So that is a real thing is when you wear a costume, it, it gives your ment like mentally you're now not yourself. You're able to play a character, which is what Ned's saying. And that's true. Like we all did drama club growing up. And when you do like the rehearsals and the run throughs, it's not really the same until that first night you put on the pants, you put on the jacket. You're like, wow, I'm someone else now. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I mean, like. Really dive into that idea. It does help a lot to have a costume and, and put on a character performance because you could be good idea yourself, uh, which and you should be yourself infused into that character. But like present yourself as like this character, like I'm gonna sing New York, New York by Frank Sinatra, and then everyone's like, oh wow, I've never seen uh, the side of Quack- Quackers and uh, McFlufferson. My uh, my apologies, uh, perform like this. You know what? I think it's very serendipitous that you're performing this on June 18th. And I'll tell you why. Because June 18th, in addition to Keith's birthday, is the day that our book comes out. It's called The Hidden Power Fucking Up. Is this isn't a plug. No, because that whole book, I mean, it is a plug, but <laughs> the, the book. <laughs> but it's a relevant plug. And we haven't had a lot of those. So this yeah. is awesome. <laughs> this, one's, or, this one is earned and deserved. Because the whole idea of the book is it's, look, a lot of what we do is this idea of embracing failure and going, trying to go out of your way to do what is the worst thing that can happen. You're putting yourself into what could be a very vulnerable situation. You're doing it in front of your ent- all your classmates. That's scary, but you need to accept the possibility of failing. And what that means is just going for it. Don't hold back. You need to like really put yourself out there and do that crazy performance because it's going to be awesome and you won't know that until you risk it. Plus, right at the end of the song, just look dead at the teachers and scream, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then no matter what you did, your student body will be so impressed with you. And what are they going to do? Send you home? School's over, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> it's talent show. I'm 13. I'm about to go to high school. I'm out of this middle school, bitches. Don't, bitches. don't do that. Don't do that. Well, do that in your mind, but don't do that maybe. out loud. What if Read he just room. does? What if he just does one like pump at his crotch? Yeah, no. crotch shot. I don't know if this is a lady or a, a man. Oh, it he or does she. bring <laughs> up uh, uh, the point. That's great. Is don't worry about messing up. Yeah. 
nobody's going to know but you. If you just, just do it and give it your all, even if you mess up or something isn't quite like you planned it, it doesn't matter. Another little practical advice from someone who is not a great singer, me, uh, you got to bring them on a journey. Start, don't, don't go out the gate at 100. Start small, build it up strong finish mm-hmm, and they're true. gonna be like wow this song's bringing me somewhere yeah. uh you know i was a really shy kid like super super unconfident and i became a huge theater choir dance nerd i was like getting lead parts in the plays oh and I my was, god a lead I, yeah i was like it was like my whole life as a kid was theater mm-hmm. theater wow. and choir and dance but I think one important thing is that I still had a lot of nervous energy and anxiety as yeah. a kid. It doesn't go away. And it doesn't go away, but it, it also is something where th- I, what I say is that when you're a child, especially when you start performing, you put all the weight, you put all the eggs in the performance to then value your self-worth. And you, one yeah. thing I want to advise is don't make the performance the barometer for your confidence. Because in the end, you're going to have fuck ups when you say a line on stage and you mess it up. You're going to have an off key night. Things like that happen because that's the life of being a performer or someone who's in front of people. Let it be uh, not the barometer, but, you know, just another tool in which you can then shape how your confidence is going to is going to grow. So I think just it takes more time maturity with that. But I think the big thing is don't don't make the performance the end all be all for for how you value yourself as a person. Just let it be uh, something that actually helps you become a yeah. more confident person. Because if you bomb, it's actually yeah. great. Because yeah. you, you, have, will, yeah. you will bomb. As, As a, a creative performer, person in life. You will bomb. Yeah. And to know what that is and to, you, and to be able to continue doing it after is a sign mm-hmm. that you are, this is for you. Because it, it's like, it, it, it's what will shape your future performances, is what will give you the confidence to figure out how to do it better mm-hmm. next time. And it, it's just like, it literally happens to all of us. I've bombed. As many times as I've succeeded, I have failed. And you learn so, so much more yeah. from the failures than you do the successes. I still get nervous before. Anytime we go in front of people, oh, yeah. I get nervous. Oh, yeah. And well, my heart races like it's crazy. Exciting. When was the last time that you bombed? Because you guys now like... You I mean, I don't bomb, but you know. <laughs> I think the best example for us was um, our <laughs> cosplay performance. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it wasn't necessarily a bomb, but it was a moment where essentially we had rehearsed this to a T with the tiny amount of time we had. But the um, the performance essentially, was an abject failure. There was a there was a whole video package and and music where the, there was that a tech totally glitch. Threw us off. So it, it essentially like sped up the entire song that we had practiced to like the point where the video package was totally off, and so we basically had to wing it at some we point. We delivered a video package that was in twenty four frames per second. Oof, thirty yeah. frames. Yeah. It, it it but we were so we were so second. upset and angry afterwards, and then the audience had no idea. That's what the lesson was. They were like, mm-hmm. we had no idea something was wrong, mm-hmm. and if we did, we just fucking ran with it. Yeah. I actually, yeah. I will say, I've fucked up in every single performance we've ever done in the Try Guys. Mm. Every oh, single yeah. one I have done, like, and every time we go off stage, I am cursing about the one, the move, like, you only focus on that one moment that you didn't nail. You don't focus on the nine out of ten. You just focus on the one. And it's taken me a long time, and I'm almost getting there of being able to shake that off and try and focus on the positives. Because, yeah, I mean, Keith, every time has to be like, dude, shut up. You did great. No one knows. Mm-hmm. Notice that one moment. But that's just for me. I get mad at it. actually at the streamies when we hosted the streamies. Oh, like, I was the worst. My then. music cue didn't come in. Yeah. I didn't get to do this dance that I had been practicing. Forever. I was actually I was severely. I was depressed the whole night after that. Yeah, because I thought I had let gaze down and queer people. Yeah, down you and drag thought down. that your dra- whole drag performance was awful, awful, because I was so focused on making sure the choreography was good. I made it everything. I was like, this performance is everything that's going to determine if we're we are of worth and it became a depressing experience but if i went in there and just kind of fucking did my shit and didn't care and had fun god it would have been so much better for my confidence the lesson you're gonna have to learn again and again again again. that's a lesson that applies to even people that are not performers right if you put all of your self-worth in whatever the final result is and final product you're you're bound to be disappointed in some way it's much, you're, you'll be much more sustained long term if you can find self worth through the process of what you're doing. Yeah. Or the general, like, underlying message and reason for what you're doing. Yeah. You're literally living by disappointment. And because even when things go great, it's not going to. Nothing's like, ever perfect. Totally Nothing's feel perfect. great or, no. yeah. 
we're going to probably make mistakes in every single live show we do this summer. <laughs> I mean, it's just going to happen. It's just, Which, there's yeah, no way. There's kind no of weirdly, I'm looking forward to that. Mm-hmm. That night Maybe, of the Because we have 20 of them, so I'm actually more like, oh, we can make mistakes. But and the maybe first show fun. we're doing is, is in LA. LA. Yeah. And no. I am so, ugh. Yeah. <laughs> like, what if they don't laugh at anything in one segment? We're just going to be like, oh, fuck. Oh, no. That didn't work. Oh, we're going to do it 19 no. more times. But, you know, that's part of just the way that you have to be when you're, uh, when you're performing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow! It Ain't really got was no jump cuts and wow, life, quacky. Baby. You really touched us with yeah, that. It was question. really fun to give so much advice. That's yeah. not normally what we do, but it's quacky. But I guess we probably had time for one more. Probably one that really needs to go for miles. <laughs> you know, ones that really need to go for miles. <laughs> Some mileage on this one right here, and it's going to happen from our very own Miles, miles Bolson. What's up, Miles Nation? <laughs> At least he's sticking to one. Yeah, he really, like the, he just took Miles over this whole good. episode. I know. Do you want to be rich as fuck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bill Gates, Rachel Ray, Chloe Grace Moretz. Whoa. These are rich people. Remember that last one? <laughs> that was a weird... Uh, a big, <laughs> I like that list. Triple yeah. choice, yeah. You think those three have ever been groups Gates together? And Chloe people Grace. with money are better than you. <laughs> 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 we just wrapped it up so nicely about your self-worth. What the, what is, All right, where's this going, now? Miles? Ned, Ned is Googling who Chloe Grace Moretz is. She played uh, uh, Hit Girl in, in uh, Bad Ass. No, uh, I, 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 I know <laughs> who she is. I'm just Googling her net worth. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. How much is money? Wealthy Gorilla reports $12 million. Yeah, what is yeah, net worth? That's like if you melted everything that you own and put it into dollars. It's not dollars. real. It's not real. Like, what it's the fuck a, does that it mean? Doesn't. It actually isn't real. Like, in another sets, sites work. What, so like there's save the <laughs> money from things you don't buy. Uh, That's e- right. Explain. Imagine you want money, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I want the money, my <laughs> want money. Well, yeah, sure. Well, I want to be a rich little boy. Something I'll do is if I'm sitting at home and I'm like, you know what? Um, I really want a fucking big ass burrito. Yeah. And now I'm going to buy it. It's going to be delicious. I'm going to eat a big burrito. And I think, well, burrito is $8.95. As I'm thinking, I'm in my head making the plans to buy the big burrito. I think, oh, no. I go into my checking account. I transfer $8.95 to my savings account. And I make dinner at home. So that way, I've saved the money for the thing I didn't buy. This is great. <laughs> this is awful. Similarly, if I'm sometimes I'm Smart. like, I want a video game. I need that video game. And then I am like in my car about to go to GameStop to buy the game, $60. And I think, no, $60 into my <laughs> savings account. And now I'm rich. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> But you still have when this. else can you make sixty dollars so quickly? Right, exactly. That's instantaneous. Boom, you just baby. Mentally decided to make sixty dollars by not spending. Exactly. You know what? You know what? I am on board. Rachel I Ray love does it. when she wants a burrito. <laughs> she buys a fucking burrito because she has so much money. Well, she also can make it because she's a chef. Yeah, but she doesn't anymore because no. she has so much money. It's a waste of her money and time to, mm. to make a burrito. Sometimes I'm bleeding. Rachel Ray net worth. <laughs> Sometimes I'm bleeding from a stab wound and instead of going to the hospital i say no that's 250 dollars yeah. in my savings now you're getting it now I get it but you it's know fun. really you do save a lot of money when you don't get takeout or eat out it's the yep. lavish purchases that you want to mentally save for but here's my question why don't you just like budget well i lack self-control zach <laughs> great question dr <laughs> idiot <laughs> 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 oh, I like I like this Miles. I like this Miles. I can't control myself, Doctor so Idiot. A, I'm in my room doing mental math. I am. A, I'm thrilled that I at least got a doctorate in my idiocy. Yeah. I well, I really respect. Yeah, he was you. about yeah. to leave his house to buy a burrito. <laughs> that's how much he didn't want to cook. He's already at home. Yeah, that's right. He's gonna leave home. Mm-hmm. Just for a burrito. This yeah. isn't like, oh, I have 20 minutes in between things. Isn't oh, it no. funny how sometimes you're, you're like buying groceries for a few meals. You're like, wow, how all these groceries cost $65. Then you go out for like a dinner <laughs> yeah. and dinner is like yeah. one meal is like <laughs> that. If you're on a date with, with somebody like, wow, I, 
And then I'm like, ah, well, that's how much dinner costs. But I'm in the grocery store, I'm like, yeah, out of all this food. Out of all this food. I know I did all this food. It costs so much money. Wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Keith. What are you saying? What are you saying? I don't understand. Oh, the bread. Can you start over? I, I missed the beginning of that. No, no. I'm a bread. 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 i am yeah. They would, uh, if you know him, you know him. If you know if you him, know you, him you know him. Yeah. And now I'm in love. I'm not sure how you follow that. I don't know. Either. Maybe you should go back to the quacky voice. I liked that better. I guess that's all the time we got. I guess what time. No, 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 no. no. Do quacky from Jersey. Uh, I'm stuck in the one. No, no. Uh, I'm very you excited. Quacky? Jersey Mill York, School. York, and I'm working so hard to be a good performer for all you guys. <laughs> and I did t- my dog. Do you see my sweet dog? Oh, what a sweetie pie. Can we have everyone do that voice, Eugene? I want to hear you do that voice. Start spreading the news. <laughs> yeah. I'm leaving today. There I'll be is. a part of it. Hey. Hey. New York, New York. It's my dog. dog. Thank you very much for listening to the Try Guys podcast, The Tripod. Be sure to rate us five stars, subscribe, and... Until next time, Keith, hit us with the Tripod theme song. That's spreading the news. It's the Tripod. Beautiful. Oh, guys, just, we really should workshop other endings. Oh.